What is going on? Welcome back to Trending Stocks. Today we're going to talk to you about Faraday Future. I want to give you a quick overview of some of the current data points, break it down what shorts are doing and what just came up from the company itself. So I'm going to go over all the things that you need to know. But first, make sure to hit that thumbs up. And with that, let's get right to it. So during the trading day, it did go down 18.71%, 21 cents the low, 29 cents the high. So kind of did really do fairly well in all honesty, given the circumstances. After hours, it is going up 18.3%. I'm gonna break that down on why. Today, there was 172.5 million shares being traded, 342 is the average. No official news from Faraday itself, but there was this that was posted on social media. So it says we are, or we were honored to host, I'm not gonna say their name and butcher it, my apologies, but um, CEO of Master Investment Group at our LA facility. So I think in general, this is good, kind of does validate exactly what Faraday has been talking about. So they're not just making up saying that they have UAE funding coming. Of course, we don't have any definitive news right now, but I think this at least is showing that they're somewhat telling the truth so i think in general that is a pretty good thing aside from that though after hours there was this form four that was submitted which did indicate right here mateus and that new preferred stock so i've already done a live stream earlier today where i went over every single circumstance that faraday is kind of going through the latest 8ks preliminary and definitive 14 a's and so in that document, this shows where Mateus did buy $100 worth of, I guess, one preferred share. And that does have a lot of voting rights for this upcoming meeting. So I'm going to summarize everything I said during the live stream near the tail end, just in case you guys kind of missed it. And so ultimately in this form four, though, it does show that he's disposing of a preferred stock. And I think this is to do more so with the administrative error because this is actually from the last shareholder meeting so again it's kind of just they're disposing of it and he did recently buy one so it's uh kind of it, it is what it is this isn't the reason why uh, faraday is up after hours though rather it is the news that just came out associated to rivian so rivian is causing every ev to go up so right now polestar is up 7.34 percent Lucid is up 13.2% and Rivian is up a astonishing 52.03%. So based on this news right here, uh, so Rivian and Volkswagen Group announced plans for a joint partnership. So it's about $5 billion, but I guess the dollar value in general doesn't matter. It's just the fact that this is a very good signal that potentially the pain might be over and the bottom might be in for EVs because usually you don't see this type of deal happen when you are anticipating a further downtrend in the sector. So this is very symbolic for the whole EV sector and that is why in general, Faraday is up. And it's actually institutions that is buying Faraday today. Um, it's not necessarily shorts returning. I can probably anticipate a lot of people saying that this right now, what is happening to Faraday is a squeeze. This isn't a squeeze um, because right now shorts are returning about 877,000 shares. And that works out to be 19.16% of the free flow is being shorted. And when I prepared for this video, which was about 10 minutes ago, it was at 1.06. So that means they are actually increasing. So as this does go up, shorts are increasing. So this isn't actually shorts returning. Shorts returned primarily during power hour. And so this is legitimately people buying. So again, this is why I like to look at a lot of the data points because it doesn't lie, right? It just says that how it is. Utilization 95.97 and then cost of our average is 12.34%. And then aside from that though, there's one very bullish thing that I wanted to share with you because as I always say, I like to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Ultimately, there was one very bullish call option that was done. And based on the timeliness and just the clearly the, the one candle, it was one entity. So one entity did buy a shit ton 
of uh, call options, which does look like it was more associated to the November 15th, 2024 50 cent strike price. And it looks like around $131,000 essentially worth. So that is very, very bullish. And so as a consensus among all the options being done today, 68% of all the options were bullish and optimistic. This is kind of the open interest, so just take note of this. As I've said in the past, this could very much correlate to a gamma squeeze. You just need a little bit more in options, in my opinion. But still, nonetheless, very good stuff to kind of look at. These are all the transactions that did occur on the secondary market over the last several trading days. So there was only one big one today, and it was at the first thing. So $436,000 in premiums. And so I think all in all, pretty exciting day i did anticipate faraday to kind of get hit a little bit more than what it did so i guess round of applause to faraday and yeah so yeah let me know your thoughts if you did buy today if you sold what did you do with faraday and so again for those of you that didn't participate in my live stream i'll just give you a quick coles notes of things that you need to know so quickly going back over to faraday looking at sec documents you see a definitive 14a preliminary 14a and 28ks so i'll give you a quick coles notes and summary of everything ultimately in one of the 8ks it does show um, mateus did buy for 100 dollars a preferred stock and ultimately that's what this is for. So at least it shows that they're on time with their kind of record keeping this time around, of course. The only negative that I wanted to bring up as far as this, because I do see people on Reddit saying that retail essentially could kind of vote the reverse stock split down and stuff like that. It's not necessarily the case, only because that one preferred stock that Mateus does have now does bring it with, where is it, 16 billion in voting power so right now going over to faraday we do know that there's 439.94 million in outstanding shares so if every single individual out there did vote no for the reverse stock split it still will go through because Mateus has huge amount of voting power. So I kind of talked on that and and many things like that. So that was one point to kind of tune into. But per, but primarily in my live stream, I did talk all about the reverse stock split. And so this one in general, like I can go, I, I think I spoke for about like 30 minutes in general, but in this document, it goes over the reverse stock split and how they want to raise the authorized shares. The authorized shares, as what they do explain in this document, is supposedly so they can free up some room for a potential partnership. I don't really see that as viable. Um, as well, in this document, it says that they're doing the raising the authorized shares so it could support the development of the FF China US auto industry bridge. I don't see that as, once again, any reason because a bridge technically has to be with a American OEM. So with the UAE, it just that wouldn't make sense unless they're potentially working on two different partnerships at the same time and somehow have a joint vendorship or something like that. But nonetheless, this is one thing that you will be voting on. It does say that they cannot predict the price, but it will be coming to fruition in the next couple of weeks. So a lot of people want to know when the reverse stock split is going to be occurring and most likely it will be happening kind of within the next probably month in my opinion not a financial advisor of course not here to spread any fud not a hedgy or whatever crap people are saying but one thing as well in this definitive 14a doesn't actually say the date of the shareholding meeting so most likely they have to give i think a seven days notice so what is going to happen next is you're going to have a kind of adjusted definitive 14a submitted probably this week, maybe Thursday or Friday, and it will have the shareholder date. You'll have probably about seven days to do all the voting that you need and whatever else. And then dependent on that, most likely it is going to be approved, like I said, because of the whole voting power associated to the preferred stock, then they're going to enact the reverse stock split. Anywhere from a one to two to one to 40. And as I said in my video, kind of a couple days back, which people didn't believe me, that they can do another reverse stock split. They can, and most likely they will orient it towards the higher end, only because this is gonna be the last time that Faraday can do a reverse stock split, because based on what they have done in the history, 
So right now they've done a one for three and a one for 80 times that together in total they've done a one for 240 based on the nasdaq rulings right here excessive reverse stock splits if company within a two-year time span has done more than a one to 250 then they shall not be eligible for any compliance period specific in this rule 58 10 c3 sub a meaning no extensions so they can do another reverse stock split but if they are over that threshold of one to 250 then that does mean they won't be able to get any future extension. So if they are deficient in the future, then they're gonna be instantly delisted, not be granted a extension. So it's kind of the bad thing. So if they are gonna do another reverse stock split, they're going to make it count. So this is why in my opinion, again, not a hedgy or whatever people like to just throw out there, it's gonna be on the higher end of one to 40. As well, I see a lot of people saying that they just need to get it above a dollar and blah, blah, blah. Technically, this is what the company did promise. Like I said, they had to generate a plan, go to and give it to the NASDAQ. This is part of their plan. So the company informed the NASDAQ hearing panel that it would target a post reverse stock split price of at least, least $5 per share. So the NASDAQ has that as kind of their benchmark. So let's say Faraday, gets to four dollars nasdaq could still say you know what you didn't live up to your plan and could say no so again that's kind of a little bit far-fetched but you guys get what i'm saying this is literally part of faraday's plan was to do the reverse stock split a lot of people saying that it's only a plan b and whatever else technically based on this like faraday has to get above five dollars whether it be naturally for those of you that think that reverse stock split isn't necessary or do a reverse stock split i go into depth a little bit more in my live stream on exactly why they're doing the things they are what they potentially would have said as well to the hearing panel so again um, if you guys have some time just listen to it i go over everything because i also do talk on the notes and how that's really causing a lot of damage to Faraday and, and everything else that you need to know. So all in all, let me know your thoughts on Faraday. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And with all that, appreciate all of you watching.